Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to the MF kit build and welcome to the end. This is going to change, this is going to morph and move and adjust as the build goes on. Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a new build series. I am going to take a kit guitar and I'm going to make it awesome. The point of this video is to take this fairly traditional instrument and show just how insane I am. So we're talking circuits and diagrams and lights and tron lines, matrixy bits, circuit board, basically. I'm feeling the, the need for cyberpunk. Little hand countersink, calipers, Ooh, this is the point of no return, by the way. That, that looks rather good. Then scrape them. I think the time has come to actually start cutting. This is, however, pucker-inducing fright. I'm going to mark out which ones we want. So, remove L material. This is fairly dusty, so, uh, so dust mask full of dust. Yay. It's suddenly, suddenly a little bit more delicate. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> I really am having far too much fun. Nice sharp scalpel blade. I've modified this scalpel blade into a scalpel blade knife, cutting, sword, thing, file of awesomeness. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Oh, hell yeah, I'm enjoying this. I'm not going for perfect. If I wanted perfect, I would have uh, sand, well, tried to get that perfectly flat in there. I'm after a, a sort of a beaten up robot kind of look. This is, this is cyberpunk with a little bit of uh, steampunk ethic. It's, it's, it's not a brand new Tron-esque um, guitar. It's, it's, a, it's a used and uh, enjoyed um, cyberpunk guitar. I need to figure out what I'm going to do inside now. Fun times. Okay. Come on then. Well, I'm going to leave that to dry for a while. Starting to get the sort of look that I'm after. So this is steel mesh. I'm going to give it a go, you know? I'm going to give it a go.
I am having the time of my life right now. It is taking, of course, a million times longer than it was supposed to, but it's fun. It's all I really need to do is cut a chamfer all the way around on both sides. I will then be gluing uh, just these two pieces together. I think that actually rather suits the guitar. Okay, the moment of truth. It's actually apply some glue now. This has been curing for some time now. She's back together. Yay me. We have to uh, drill the through body stringing. It's looking pretty good. We have to do some scraping and fine sanding all that. I've got to finalize this joint and then there is also the question of um, the wiring diagram that I want to route into the top and then uh, fill somehow. I often say that uh, what happens on the back of the guitar is as important as uh, what the front looks like and feels like. We have an attractive instrument. That looks pretty cool. Lovely uh, chamfers around the edge. However, other than that joint here, everything else is fairly standard. I need to get rid of that roundover and I need to do something with these control cavities. There's nothing better than a good saw. Mad it. Giant ass chisel. And that makes all the difference. Of course, there is more sanding to be done and I have basically taken a step back in the build by changing my mind yet again. But, quite frankly, this final result means that the back of the guitar looks like it fits with the front. Uh, Design-wise, it's being true to the sort of the ethos of the build, it's being true to the, the idea of taking a standard instrument and completely changing it. Without, without changing the, the outline, without changing the shape, I am making it unique. Now, what I wanna do is have the black Spirit Boast Stone as the base. We're building a cyberpunk guitar. And when you think about technology, I love the phthalo blue. You, you think blues and silvers and um, neon. That, already actually looks like a finish that I would... <sighs> yeah, a black to blue. Um, we're done, no more experimenting, let's go home. Cheers. I don't know what to do. I'm... <sighs> I've been unhappy with the tin foil in the uh, 
uh, in the hex sound holes for a while. It's not, it did not burnish out, it did not become smooth, and this is problematic to me. And uh, I thought, ah, maybe I can get away with it and just, just leave it because, you know, let's see how it looks after the stain. But all of the comments, almost all of the comments are going, Ben, what are you doing? That just looks nasty, you know. Uh, and I listen to you, and uh, you're right. I've got a fresh blade in my scalpel. Let's remove hours and hours of work because it didn't work. You've got to be prepared to fail utterly if you want to achieve anything, period. Okay, this is looking much, much better. Uh, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of reshaping of the hexagons, and uh, then it is time to paint and stain. It looks so much better like this. I am using the spirit-based stain. All right, I'm taking some of the pink stain and just applying it over. It's taking some of the black off, taking some of the blue off, and just, just adding a little bit of interest. This is the fun bit. I'm gonna have to be so careful. Some of this stain is gonna come back, and I'm hoping that the, uh, the aluminium here is gonna end up looking, there we go, <laughs> so look at the difference, less purple, more, more silver. It's getting slightly tacky and I'm just going to lightly, I don't want to take too much stain off, I'm just going to lightly remove excess oil. I am on to the neck. I'm gonna do some engraving. The plan is that I'm gonna have um, circuit board lines similar to what's on the body. And those lines are gonna be engraved into the mother of pearl so that it looks like the mother of pearl is actually a window into the internals of the neck. And the circuit lines are gonna go up underneath. I'm regretting certain life choices. It's time to glue the neck in, really. <laughs> I'm really enjoying my life. And there we go. We've got a guitar. At this stage, it becomes real. This is the first time I've actually held it as a guitar, and I'm in love. I'm sticking with the spirit-based stain. I really like this. I think I'm in love. permanent marker along the top of each fret. We know that the neck is level, very gently. There you go, you can see that I've barely taken anything off the top of that fret. Now we need to go onto the crowning process.
fretboard cleaner. And uh, this is the fretboard restorative. All right, I need to make a, a quick paper template. So I'm just putting on quite a lot of the penetrating guitar oil at the moment. And uh, I'll stop applying it when it stops penetrating. And then we move on to the high build. So all the excess oil comes off and get rid of it as each application is, uh, is going on. And that builds up a perfect finish. There's some pretty nice flaming here. This is what it looks like when it's wet. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually a pretty impressive finish as is. So this is the finish after three coats. To be frank, I could put some, uh, some microcrystalline wax on this now and be happy with it. So. Time for some staining. So we're going for the same sort of effect that we had on the top of the guitar. And then I'm gonna put some black over the top. Look at that. Paint. This is the finish achieved with about three coats of the high build and a single coat of the uh, penetrating guitar finishing oil. Onto the wax. There's no point in having a nut on a guitar if it's not comfortable. And uh, you've got to round the edges over so that it doesn't bite into your palm as you, uh, as you play. This is, uh, this is the user interface of your guitar and it's absolutely essential. Whenever you're uh, soldering anything, tin it beforehand. In other words, put some solder on first. Okay, this might actually, woohoo, ha ha! It's the little things in life that just improve it. Okay, pickups. <laughs> I think I like the look of that. Strings, strings. This is, this is a moment. No matter how many guitars you build. Rear guard. Shielding thing. 
protects your back cavity. This is our new formula shielding paint. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> to the office where the lights can be turned off. Come on. Do I have to give it away? Put solder on your, on your iron. And that's tinned. Helping hands are also really <laughs> rather useful. We're done, we've got batteries, we've got an earth lead running through there. But before I can test anything, we have to put this in. When we put this in, the lights turn on. We have lights, we have power, we have LEDs. Woohoo! So set the tuning. Done.